Uh, but it's probably the best single professional move I ever made. And I just recently retired from there after 23 years. And, and uh, the community college system in the state of California is magnificent. Mm -hmm. Anza College is, is the number one magnificent school for me. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the period of time that you were there, how long was that? Again? 23 years. 23 years. You coached for how long then? 17. 17. And then you went into to lead the PE uh, physical education department? Yeah, I became the division chair for the last six years. Okay. Um, and I did have the opportunity to play for you, and that was a tremendous experience for me, especially knowing who you were before going over there. And I did talk to some players uh, that had played for you, and they, they had nothing but nice comments. In fact, Bill Picota, um, who I talked to recently, had uh, said that the one thing that Ed Brasud did is, is taught him the transition wasn't so difficult going for, from, uh, let's say, a college situation into the major leagues. Uh, that's the one quote that he attributed to you, that it was a, the transition was very easy because you prepared him mentally for it. Um, and uh, he's very fond of that experience that he had with you. Um, in, the, in the time that you coached, 17 years, who were some of the special players that you did coach? Oh, there were so many of them. Um, I, I think one right off my hand, right off hand the first, first team I had was uh, Gary Landreth, and his father and I had played professional baseball together for seven, eight years. Uh, he was my, my catcher my first year out. We had uh, a shortstop by the name of, of uh, Glenn Agusa, who I just happened to see in our recent De Anza uh, golf gathering at Castlewood. Um, uh, we've had some, we had another young fellow by the name of Kenny Agusa, who is now a, a PhD at teaching in, in uh, teaching sociology in Japan. Uh, I've had all kinds of players who call from time to time and and are interested in finding out what I'm doing and, and if there's something that uh, they want to ask, I'm there available to them. Uh, Frankie Garcia, I think about one who ran our club at De Anza College the year after I retired, did a magnificent job, and I believe he's in the Fresno area, he's, and he's getting his degree, he's getting his master's degree. Another young man, Darren Hoff, just came by school uh, Tuesday of this week and told me he's going back to school to get his master's and he wants to be a coach, and that was very pleasing. From a standpoint of players who have gone on, Danny Gladden played for us for two years and, uh, of course, has been an outstanding major league player for the last six or seven years. Uh, Mike Vail played for us for two years and was a seven or eight year major league veteran player. Uh, Billy Picotto, who you're just commenting now, has been up and down and now I understand he's playing very, very well. I understand he's 380 at the present time with uh, that ball club. I had Sandy Whittle, who played for about a year, year and a half with Cleveland. We have a lot of players who've been in the minor leagues. Uh, we have two right now that could very well get in the big leagues, and that's Mark Leonard, who's with the giant organization, hit 335 at Phoenix right now. Hmm. And, uh, um, oh, those are the names that come to mind right offhand. How about some opposing players and coaches that you've gone up against? Well, uh, Rigetti, Leo, not Leo, Leo Rigetti <laughs> is the father, uh, but Rigetti, Dave, over at with the New York uh, Yankees at the present time, I can recall him pitching a game against us. Uh, he was pitching for San Jose City at that particular time, and he struck out 14 of us. Uh, after, and after the game, I went over and talked to both he and his father, because I knew Leo. Leo was a shortstop in professional baseball as well, and I said, he is going to be a great pitcher. He had a great changeup, and he had an awfully good fastball at that particular time. Uh, uh, there was a boy by the name of Charbonneau who played for West Valley and uh, was a pretty good player in, high, in at uh, West Valley and all of a sudden got in the big leagues within about two years and had a magnificent one year. I, th I think he might have been the, the rookie of the year. I believe he was, yeah. And uh, uh, those kinds of players you remember. I remember uh, Dave Steve, in fact, was a, was a local player that used to play outfield before he made the transition to a pitcher. That's right. Dave played for San Jose City College as well. Was not a, not never pitched. Was a center fielder. Mm -hmm. And a, a strong arm center fielder, obviously, at this particular <laughs> time. But, uh, put the ball in play quite well. Okay. Well, now, what was the tra transition now as you headed the uh, De Anza College uh, PE department? What was that change that you walked completely away from baseball? Was that difficult or not? Well, it wasn't something I had planned. Uh, the previous uh, dean of the division had made a decision that uh, he wanted to do something else. Uh, he wanted to get back into coaching. He had been a track coach and he wanted to get back into it. I had been the assistant division dean for about 10 or 12 years prior to that. and. Uh, uh, so he resigned, and all of a sudden there was a vacancy. Uh, I frankly did not pursue it at the beginning. To the, at the beginning, and uh, but the more I got to thinking about it, I could I could uh, call my time my my own a little bit. I wouldn't be on playing balls on sat playing ball on Saturday all the time. I wouldn't be traveling with the team and getting back at eight or nine o'clock. Uh, there would be a, a more defined schedule for me. And also, I thought that maybe I could do something in terms of leadership that might make it better for the division and better for the athletic department. 
And I think those are the, probably the two factors that influenced me most into making that decision. Okay. I want to ask you real briefly, we're running out of time here, but uh, what are the most uh, gratifying moments perhaps in your playing career, your coaching career? Um, first of all, let's start with your, your playing career. What is probably the most memorable or the most gratifying moment? Well, you think about times you might have done something to win a ball game, uh, hit a home run in the ninth, or, or make a very good play or whatever. But I think probably the most gratifying for me was to be selected on the All-Star team in 1964 when I was mm -hmm. with uh, the Boston Red Sox. I had had two, two very good years before that with them. And uh, frankly, I thought I might even made it in 1962, and I didn't, and I was somewhat disappointed. Uh, but in 1964, I did, uh, I, I, I was selected, and I think that was probably the high point of my career. Sure. How about coaching? Uh, I think, well, about my second year, I think it was, we wound up playing for the Northern California Championship against a team from uh, San Mateo. And they beat us, a uh, little second baseman who had never hit any home runs in his life, hit two in the same game and beat us. Uh, I think his <laughs> name was Laconan or something like that. Uh, but that was probably the high point for me at that point. Uh, I, in terms of just being with players, younger players, and having an opportunity to watch them grow, and even now sitting back and watching a person like yourself, I've had an opportunity to work with you as a young man, and now I'm seeing where you're going. I think that's probably the, the most important thing for me. Okay. How about at, at, at Dan's College as, as an administrator? I think being able to... Um, work with the uh, present administration in trying to uh, get things that the division feels is important, whether it be facilities or whether it be equipment or whether it be philosophical changes or personnel changes, and, and we've done all of those things. Uh, I think probably the, what I'm most proud of at the college is the facilities have become really a number one, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think there's any, com any community colleges that can touch us from that point of view, and I feel a little bit proud and, and involved in that. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time. It, you could spend an hour talking with you, Ed. Uh, there's, there's so many things that this man's a part of and uh, that he's done and, and the, the lives that he has touched, either directly or indirectly. And um, uh, I want to thank you for being our guest today. And um, I hope you uh, have the best time in your retirement. I know you are. I'm going to be heavy into self-indulgence. Yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Ed, you, read, you do have a golf tournament that, or a golf extravaganza. that. If you're interested in that, please get a hold of us at uh, What's Up in the Nines at 15102. If you have any comments to Ed Bursud, we'll make sure that you, we get him on over, over to him because he does have different golf extravaganza he puts on that we can't go into detail on at this point. But uh, thanks for being here today, um, and uh, we'll be here back next. We'll be back here next week uh, at seven o'clock. Hope to see you then. Bye now. That'll do it. This has been What's Up in the 90s with your host, Brian Stuckey. Be sure to join us again next week for another look at What's Up in the 90s. I'm Tim Jeffries. Good night.